Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the virtual breakfast sessions. My name is Larry Sashin, and boy, do we have a great group for you today. Um, you know, our topic is something that is very pertinent to whatever you do, whether you're in food service or you're, you know, you're, you do lawns. Uh, team building is, is key. Uh, without a team, the manager has to do everything themselves, and we all know that is almost impossible. So before we get going on this, I'd like to go around the room and introduce the panel. Bob, why don't you start? Hey, I'm Bob Heiss. Uh, my company is SNR Sales Development. Uh, we have we do uh, sales consulting, sales training, um, and uh, not not really in, uh, not exclusive to the food industry, but but. Uh, Set a timer for thirty eight minutes. Uh, please minutes. mute your mics, everyone in the audience. Okay, go ahead, Bob. Done. Oh, done. <laughs> Good, Liz. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Liz Newmark, CEO and founder of Great Performances. Uh, we've been around for a short four plus decades. Um, and I think the last couple of years, just for all of us in this industry, have been uh, kind of interesting. I never want to hear the word pivot again, but pivot <laughs> we do. <laughs> that is a way of life. That is a way of life. Uh, Ralph. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ralph Tejeda. I'm the founder and CEO of Tropical Sourcing. I've uh, been in business for 30 years, uh, importing tropical fruits and vegetables and doing some distribution and uh, consulting uh, here in uh, the New York area. I am also um, chairman of the Morris County Hispanic American Chamber of Commerce in New Jersey. Thank you, Ralph. Hey, Fred. Why don't you say hello? I'm Fred Clashman. I'm the editor and publisher of Total Food Service. I'm thrilled to uh, listen and learn. Okay. Well, let's get back to the subject. Uh, team building in 2023. We've all heard about shortages in labor and you know food and supplies and the shortages in everything. Everything is slowed down. How would you like to be waiting for an airplane today? Um, so... Uh, you know, let's get to it. Bob, um, why don't you give the basics of team building? Well, um, when you think about uh, we, uh, all of us as human beings, there's one thing we value and, and uh, try to protect more than anything else. And that's our own self-esteem, our own ego, um, who we are as people. And uh, in traditional, let's call it uh, direct order, almost military, traditional military type operations, uh, there was very little um, attention paid to egos, self-esteem, and so forth. In other words, uh, you're just, you just are supposed to do what you're told to do. So imagine now that you're working in a, in a, uh, in a, uh, a food service uh, type of business, restaurant, catering, whatever it is, and uh, let's let's be honest, they, those a lot of those people are not treated with um, with respect. It's not the most glamorous job in the world. The pay is is quite often not very high. Um, they are yelled at by the chefs, by the staff. They're yelled at by the customers. Um, it's it's not a, a uh, intrinsically rewarding experience. So it's in in team building. The idea is to make everybody feel valued. So how can you make them feel valued? How can you give them value as a, as a person? Um, because if they feel that, they will walk through fire to make, uh, to make things work. So how do you do that? In, in my opinion, you do that by asking those people for their input. I don't mean those people. I mean asking everybody for their input, asking them for their opinions, asking them for solutions to problems. And imagine that uh, no matter what level worker you are, that somebody asked you for your opinion and they actually considered it, took it seriously, and maybe even acted upon it. Um, the pride that you would feel, the ownership you would feel in the solution in the, in the establishment, and in fact, in the team itself would be tremendous. So, so uh, my idea on team building is involve everybody, ask their opi opinions and treat them uh, as as if you're collaborating with them, not telling them what to do. Okay, thank you, Bob. Liz, you've built a, a very large organization, um, and you've done it 
I guess, differently than most people. Um, where did you find success? How have you been able to put this together and it, to the size you were at? And tell everybody how many employees you have, by the way. Okay. I, I think full time, uh, and we're a small, a little small company. That's how I feel. When big guys are the Amazons of the world, we're, we're still peanuts. Uh, but I think we're full time, we're about 275 and part time hourly, we're probably, you know, eight, 900, a thousand people. Um, and we started in the door we came through for hospitality was the people business. We started in 1980 as a waitress service for women in the arts. And implicit in that lineup and description is really some core values that I think have spoken to how we look at teams. One thing is hospitality, food service, and corporate worlds in general, very male dominated. Um, men and women just generally, not all men, not all women, operate differently, run businesses differently, different cultures. Uh, and the restaurant business has a interesting reputation from the decades of, of really being uh, a male dominated business. So our position coming in was more around gender balance, which creates a different culture. Uh, and the second thing that we've always incorporated, which I think flows out to team building and culture is values, whether it was our arts value or how we look at sustainability, our community work, because all that does speak to the kind of company and the atmosphere you create. So I hope that answers some of your origin questions. And interesting hearing Bob talk about rank and file versus, you know, I thought we were maybe focusing more on uh, management level teams or, or, or tier one teams, because that's, but, but, but they are the same, how we treat people, the messages we send. Um, and it's interesting when I go to an event and I see the, the, the people who are, are frontline workers, doesn't matter how I shop, how we cook, how we plan, it is all in the hands of the people who are facing our customers. And I don't think we, we really think about that enough. You know, it's interesting, you, we, you just mentioned rank and file and management. The truth of the matter is, is that um, a manager is as strong as the weakest link underneath him because every management team is a house of cards. And we have to keep that in mind when we're building a team. Now, Ralph, you've done things a bit different than everybody else here. Talk about your team. Sure. Uh, well, uh, thanks, Larry. Uh, you know, my, my team is, is, is unique. I, um, I've been a consultant for many years, uh, consulting and helping um, importers and produce companies uh, with their management, you know, from, you know, uh, procurement to um, warehouse operations uh, and logistics. And um, I've recently organized, reorganized my business to, um, to start importing, handling product, you know, product for, 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 for myself and, and, and my company. And, and, and what I've done is I've been working with, um, with subcontractors. So, uh, you know, from uh, custom brokers to truckers to, um, to uh, in and out facilities to warehouse my products. Uh, everything is is subcontracted contracted out to to these uh, companies, which uh, which is you know just a, a, a great great help because um, I can focus as an entrepreneur. I can focus on on on, on building my business, uh, but I rely on the the contractors to do their job. So uh, um, I when I first started this business thirty years ago, I had a truck and I would go to the airport and pick up the product. And I would sell and I would invoice and I would collect and I had to clean or rework product. I would do it, um, 
by myself or uh, I had one or two employees and that was it. And, and I've changed my business. Uh, I, I, I know, uh, you know the word pivot is, is a word that, uh, that has been overused, but um, I've had to change. And, um, and, and, and now after, after 30 years, I, I, I found, um, I believe, a, a good formula for my business to, um, to rely on, on other companies uh, and have them worry about the management of, you know, oh, I need a truck, I need drivers, I need insurance. Um, I just rely on them to to do their job efficiently. And uh, and and there's plenty of businesses that are that are looking for for work. And if I have to make a change, um, I don't change employees and go through the whole process. I just change a company and um, and expect uh, excellent results. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. You've got a hybrid organization. You have employees yep. and people who either contract or just contribute. Yep. How do you work? How do you keep everybody straight and happy? Well, let's I, I, I want to back up for a second, too. I think there's something that we're missing in the conversation, which oh, is I think it's become very complicated and very convoluted. Everybody would like to have a dedicated group of both management and contractor employees um, on the pay on the payroll uh, with full benefits, et cetera, et cetera. I think as a result of where wages have gone and as a result of how government treats business and small business, it's become a bit of a maze in terms of how we run and operate these businesses. So with that being said, I think we've been forced over the last 10 years to change how we approach what we do and at the same time have a constant look towards the technology that's in the marketplace. And, we, and that's even before AI came out, et cetera, in terms of how we could use technology um, to minimize overhead where we could do it. So that being said, I'm now happy to answer the question. Okay. But I think, that, I think it's important that we talk about how the ground rules have changed. Okay, so okay. answer the question. Now I will answer the question. Uh, <laughs> the answer to the question is that today's employee or today's management team member needs to be left alone. Um, you can't, when I, when I grew up at, I worked at CBS and ABC and you literally got, got, beaten to death every day by management, et cetera, over what your performance was. We now live in a very different world. Um, everybody, the, the younger people in particular, everybody wants a trophy. Everybody wants a, uh, wants a badge for a great job. So I think you're constantly looking for what is the good that comes out of each one of our individuals that work with us? Um, and how do we utilize that to I don't want to use the word criticize, but to redirect whatever the efforts are. So it's a very, it's a very, very different world today. Um, and it'll be interesting to track where we go from here in terms of business. So the answer is find great people, trust them, let them do what they do really well. And um, with the goal being that maybe they do things better than or differently than you ever did. And that's where your business should be. Okay. You know, we, we talk about finding good people and letting them do their job. Well, how do they learn their job? Bob, where does education uh, and training fall into team building? Well, I think there's a big issue. I'd like to maybe perhaps put that aside, Fred just did, put that aside for a second and address something Fred said that okay. kind of makes, uh, makes me a little nervous. Um, <clears throat> And I'm, I'm completely agreeing with you, Fred, but I think employees these days see um, tech advances, particularly in restaurants and, and you know, with POS systems and, and, and all of that, they see, they, they see technology um, kind of as a threat, uh, a threat to, uh, to their jobs, to how many people are needed to run the organization and so forth, kind of like being a toll taker when they introduced EasyPass. Uh, you know, you're, 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 you're a marked person. Um, and I've seen restaurants go through these efficiency uh, uh, campaigns to, to become more efficient. And, you know, if you're a poorly paid worker that's treated, that's treated not so nicely, 
um, being screamed at by everybody, as, as I described, which, which, by the way, is not the case everywhere, just as, just as an example. Um, you might read efficiency measures as a way to lessen the headcount and, uh, and, and become more profitable for the owner where you're not sharing in profit and so forth. So there's a real kind of a miss with, with a lot of this stuff. Um, so I think to, to address the education part, Larry, I think that um, a lot of employees don't get to see the bigger picture. They don't know where that, that, that restaurant or catering business fits in the marketplace what their position or their their uh, their stance is. Uh, they don't know what their contribution is other than just picking up plates and moving them to the dishwasher. So so I think uh, the education part is is perhaps has a lot perhaps has a lot to do with um, you know who are we? What are we trying to be and where do you fit into this puzzle? Oh, it, it, you and, know, and by the way, I love what, what Liz was talking about. And Liz, I, I think if if, if your message of, of um, you know, gender equality and, and balancing things is, is, uh, uh, you know, is one of the hallmarks of your business, that probably should be communicated to everybody so they know where they are in that, in that whole thing. I think, that's, I think that's the education part. Yeah, I, and, but doesn't, you know, if, if you're, if you're you know, towards the bottom of the, of the pecking order, uh, without education, you stay there you stay there or you just have to leave and go someplace else. So isn't education the key for to advancement? Uh, you know, Liz, how do you deal with it? Well, I, I, I vehemently disagree. I, I think one of the, uh, you know, we started talking about a perfect game last night. Yeah. Um, that kid was born with a gift of how to pitch. I right. think we're missing. I think what we're missing here is that much of these things are natural instincts for people, the ability mm -hmm. to, to, to serve other people, things that we can't, that we are incapable of teaching, et cetera, and that we spend an awful lot of time. If we look at the, an 80, 20 rule, we spend an awful lot of time trying to teach people who are never going to get it. Mm -hmm. So I think before yeah, we go I, overboard, go ahead, please. Yeah, no, to that point, Fred, I want to reinforce what you're saying. You can, you can teach skills. You can't teach attitudes. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. Well, you know, I think that's yeah. an interesting segue into a word that we hear more and more and more, which is workforce development. And in the aftermath of the pandemic, as business bounced back, it seemed like anybody who knew anything about service either went back to Idaho or whatever, or they moved to Florida or they became real estate brokers. And our industry in terms of that experience, polished level of service was, was decimated. And we really leaned in very heavily into uh, workforce development with nonprofits, government agencies, and brought in a whole new a cadre of servers. And it's been a really interesting experience to, I mean, I learned about hospitality because I had to serve one course per meal growing up and I knew where you served and where you cleared and, you know, it was ridiculous. My brother all had to sweep the floor. He didn't have to serve. Um, but it's, and we have no choice. And, and I think it's important when we look at our urban centers and we think about what our commitment is as members of this broader community outside our business, what we have to do, where we have to invest, who is doing a good job with workforce development and who is not. Uh, and, and this dovetails with two other really big um, trends. One is the generational shift. And I, just looking at you know, us over here, we don't really represent this next generation, Easy but now. it is, <laughs> it is, it, listen, we all dye our hair this color. My hair is naturally vibrant blonde. Um, so, so it is a, a different generation. They have been walloped by this whole, uh, the, um, the work from home thing, which I think I don't mind going on record. I think it's going to go away. I think it's ridiculous, but also technology. You know, the, I, I've heard people say 25% of all jobs today are going to disappear once AI really starts to, to, to roll in. So it's, it's kind of a perfect storm. You know, we have climate change going on. So uh, you know, I have a bunch of events that canceled because of the smoke outside today. And that's just the beginning. So how do we integrate all these different streams, which don't really sound like hospitality, but we're, we're just a business. 
and think through education, workforce development, training, trust, managing people, empowering them. Uh, you know, there's not a millennial I've hired who doesn't think in two weeks they get to have my job. And fine, they can have it. <laughs> but it's it's an interesting moment in time. Yes, yes. You know, it, I, I, I didn't mean that anybody can be trained to do anything. Uh, what I meant was without training, um, you, 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 someone who is capable of doing the other job never learns. I know we have, uh, Yvonne, Yvonne, are you there? Can you unmute? Where is Yvonne? Hi, good morning. Hi, Yvonne. Where are you, Yvonne? You know, you've led an interesting path uh, to where you are today. Please tell everybody who you are and, 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 and a little brief thing on how you got there, how, how people lent you a hand in your climb up the ladder. I'm not quite sure I understand the question fully. Okay, so it didn't just happen for you. You didn't just come out of school and start a restaurant. There was always somebody there to teach you something. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's if, if I can kind of trace back to, to what we were just discussing about training, I mean, I've been I've been very fortunate to be part of some really great companies where the training is, is extensive. Um, and somebody mentioned that, you know, you're trying to uh, you're trying to force somebody to learn. But the thing is, like, if you've done the hiring correctly from the beginning and you have the attitudes there and it's it's it becomes kind of like a collective enthusiasm where you're 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 excited to learn. And depending where you are, I mean, I'm sure Great Performances has a fantastic training program. You know, it, Danny Meyer has a fantastic training program. And we opened, we opened Guilt in the New York Palace Hotel. And like, I remember our binders for like learning were thick and the, the knowledge or even I'll, I'll trace back to Tau Group. I've opened a couple of different restaurants with Tau Group and our training was intensive. You know, it was two weeks plus of training of how to serve, how to react, uh, you know, hands on. They have a uh, they have a, a couple of days of literally staff on staff where you're serving each other, where the management is walking around, kind of correcting small things, teaching you to anticipate, teaching you. But it's I think at the end of the day, it's really you're 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 like a coach, right? You're a cheerleader. You're you're trying to to make everybody excited about doing a job that they don't necessarily want to do but through that kind of infectious enthusiasm you 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 start to kind of drag people along and it becomes a little bit easier you know people get excited about serving you get excited about your tips increasing you get excited about a job well done you know whenever we get a a, a positive comment we make sure to share it with the team and say you know what this these people were very excited we had a we had a bartender that couldn't come and we had a server just be a bartender and she had to make sangria. She never made sangria before. So we taught her how to make sangria and she made it. Lucky enough, we got a comment on, on Google that said, it's the best sangria I've ever tasted. So we sent it to her and we're like, listen, you did a great job. Look, they, they were excited about the sangria. And all of a sudden this person was that didn't particularly want to be there. She, didn't, she was very scared about being a bartender. <laughs> Now we can put her to bartend all the time. Now she's a little bit more interesting and interested in bartending. And she'll do, she'll go along for the ride because she knows that we have her back. We taught her, we trained her. She feels, you know, empowered and proud of doing a job that, that, that she did. Yeah, I, I think what, what, what Yvonne has just touched on is how do you change an employee into a team member, into a team member? Yeah, Bob. Uh, Yvonne, your example is, is a perfect example of valuing somebody as a human being. The fact that you were able to take that person, any person, and give them a chance to develop a skill, enhance their responsibility, and so forth, tells them that you think highly of them as a person and, and as a and as a worker. That that is how you build teams. I mean, yes, no, absolutely, very simple. Yes, uh, Ralph. Ralph, you're working with your, everybody is outsourced. How do you keep these people involved and um, excited about working with you? Well, uh, uh, Larry, um, 
motivation is is definitely um, a, a very important and and I like to kind of change my hat and 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 put on the hat of of of, of the chairman of uh, of the of the chamber um, and um, you know we work with uh, we have about two thousand uh, members that are mostly entrepreneurs many are restaurant owners or uh, own bodegas or small supermarkets or uh, landscaping in the landscaping business um, you know. One of the things that you know that we do to to keep them motivated is that you know we have we have events we have networking events we have um, training events uh, we've been helping uh, you know uh, working with the uh, New Jersey Economic Development uh, Authority to um, to help train uh, these business owners to um, you know to work with social media and um, and get minority certified uh, to um, help them with 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 language and and uh, put them in touch with 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 bilingual uh, um, you know experts in in their trade so so I, I think it's 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 very important to um, to share knowledge uh, with uh, with your staff uh, share information with other businesses and that way um, you know you know the whole ecosystem uh, uh, you know can can progress and and, and work work together Okay, I, 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 we just got a question from the audience. So Cherry asked, uh, how do they manage language barriers to create an inclusive atmosphere? Um, Peter Herrero, uh, unmute yourself for a second. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm in a car. Okay, Peter, Peter can you answer that question? It's funny you say that. I am uh, Cuban descent, mother and father. So I speak a couple different languages, mainly English and uh, secondary Spanish. It's funny. I've heard it from different speakers. I, I believe there's an emotional uh, recession going on. Uh, we've lost Peter. We lost Peter. Um, until Peter comes back, Liz, how do you deal with that? Um, uh, a lot of he back? connectivity. He's back. But if you can, am I back? Yes. Oh, I am back. Okay. Sorry, Liz. Go ahead. No, go. No, finish, go ahead. Peter. Go ahead. Get, okay. Grab it. Um, it's funny. Everybody thinks they don't fit in, and everybody wants to be met where they are. The problem that we find men, women, different sexuality, different languages is it, it's a different world. I love this world of inclusiveness, but at work, it's a challenge. And I've asked my staff to when we're talking amongst each other in public to speak English. And it's funny. I will walk away. And in Spanish, they will say this gringo is racist. I turn to them in, in Spanish and I say what gringo is being racist to you and they look at me and go oh um it's and he goes well you speak spanish really good for an american i'm like i'm cuban so what does that have to do with me being the manager of this company um and they laugh and goes i accept everybody but we need to meet our you want me to meet you where you are i will but we have to meet our clients where we are. It is funny, Liz, you hit it on the spot. When we have women, females, uh, in our kitchens, oh my God, our kitchens are so much better. No yelling, no screaming, no vulgarity. It's, I don't know if it's a, a male, female thing, if it's most of our kitchens now are Latino. It's phenomenal. If you, when we make coffee, did you want a cafe con leche? And they look at me because you know what a cafe con leche is? Come on, I'm, I'm Cuban. All right, I'm not Latino because you guys see us as Caribbean. If you meet your staff where they are, if it's with food, we rotate family meal and have our entire staff cook different things. The only thing we have to be careful with is spices. I will tell you, I just can't do spices. I've gotten older, but languages, ethnicity it's interesting and if you meet people halfway most people i agree with bob you can't train everybody and most people there are some people who just don't belong in our staff 
And as managers, with all due respect, we got to get rid of them as soon as possible. They are the sour apple. They turn the staff. It's us against them. It's I, I hope I didn't go on too long. But if you meet your staff halfway with language, culture, food, it's amazing. They will meet you there. Uh, when I go get coffee for myself, I take a coffee order for the entire commissary or kitchen. It's 10 people. They laugh that I, 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 I've turned into a waiter. I'm the CFO, I'm CEO of the company, and I've turned into a waiter for the culinary team. The okay. waiters look at me because why do you do that? They cook for us every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can't get them a drink. Hey, don't worry. You don't have to get them a drink but they don't have to make your dinner, lunch, or breakfast anymore. It's amazing how they, the staff, most of them, goes and gets the culinary team something hot or cold to drink. All right. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. But Peter just opened up a new door. He mentioned that uh, if there's somebody that doesn't belong there, you must get rid of them. That is, A, an important part of team building. And B, it is one of those parts of team building that most managers feel a bit uncomfortable about. Um, Liz, how do you handle something like that? So, so I just want to translate something that Peter said, uh, the very important word, which is respect. And uh, respect is so critical. And what you talked about, uh, bringing coffee for someone, you're the boss. I do it all the time. If someone, anyhow, it, it, it's we we all know that. Um, and this industry is not for everybody. And I think it's okay to embrace that because hospitality is exactly what that word means. It's it's being hospitable. It's you have to you have to want to be here. It's a tough business. Just the way you know, being an engineer is not for everybody. They don't have to make room for, for, for folks who don't belong there. So it's, um, it's part of this very complex HR landscape that we find ourselves in now. Uh, progressive discipline, where we all live with the threat of unionization if you're a union-free environment. So doing things by the book, which is almost a shackle for an entrepreneurial spirit. It's like, why can I just say, get the hell out of here. Don't come back. It's, it's um, there. And, and, and the bigger you are, the more of a target you are. And there's a lot of strange people out there and there's a the whole world of social media. Uh, so hiring as smartly as you can, having the 30, 60, 90 day review things, which we're trying to really, really live by in a way that we've never done before, giving feedback, documenting, all that, 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 that sort of mind numbing stuff that we really hate is just core to, to all our managers and to you know, leadership team here. Okay, we, you, the 30, 60, 90 day reviews uh, is something that I think is extremely important. Um, this way you're letting people know where they stand at all times. But, but Larry, Larry, you're missing what Liz is really saying. That's yes. super important. And I just finished editing our latest issue. You have to understand the potential legal pitfalls that, that sit out there with every employee that you add more than ever. So it's great to talk about reviewing people, but it's far more important to understand how to protect yourself going forward. Okay, I mean, they're so part. They're 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 two sides of the same coin. Right, you have right. to be, you know, it's 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 prophylactic, and then it's also operational. Uh, and they're different people in those different roles, and it, right. it is a landmine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how do we not step on the landmine, Bob? One of the keys in in uh, doing those kinds of of um, evaluations and plans and, and, uh, and, and growth is that we agree with people that are working for us slash with us on what's expected ahead of time, what their, what the company's objectives are, what their objectives are as people as well. And uh, any measurements we do after 30, 60, 90 days, year, yearly reviews, which, which you know, are quite, quite honestly are regarded as, as uh, by a lot of employees as traps 
for my eventual firing. You know, they're they're uh, a lot of people look at them that way. But but to wait to the way to make those work and grow people is agree to objectives ahead of time, agree to behaviors, agree to uh, key performance indicators ahead of time, and measure afterwards. Did they accomplish that or not? Most importantly, move. What are they going to do for the next mark? Call it marking period uh, going forward. Uh, what what are the new objectives and so forth? That way you can ensure progressive growth, or you can see progressive failure, and uh, you can you can therefore get somebody to leave, or you yourself have a planned uh, planned attrition um, much more easily. But I have to say this: I, I want to comment on what uh, you said before, Liz. And and Peter was saying as well. It's it's really all about respect, and and um, uh, a lot of companies will look at getting rid of a troublesome employee, uh, somebody that can't get the KPIs, the key performance indicators done, uh, somebody that's just not successful. They will regard them as as uh, uh, well. They they fire them because for those reasons. Um, uh, I, I think it's all about respect, and I think I think that when you do let somebody go, you have to make it public that a large part of the problem was not their skills necessarily, but their attitude, um, because therein lies a lesson for everybody. Okay, so here we, in uh, we've we've all been through this in the last few years. Everybody that was perfect in, in their job, all of a sudden found themselves without it. Um, how do you deal with the AI, with the uh, automation, how do you deal with the changes in the industry in uh, bringing people in and or firing them? Well, I think AI is, uh, you know, we're doing as a company, a super deep dive with uh, key folks who are most likely to embrace it. Uh, across the different departments. So uh, if you check in in about six to eight weeks, I think we'll be able to know a lot more, but it's really looking at hospitality through a different lens and understanding, you know, for us, because I, I always thought we're, you know, we're low tech, um, that it's an old fashioned business, we're not going anywhere. And that would sort of be ignorant uh, on our part and how you know, I know the machines that Brun was, and I, 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 I don't really know how it will hit back of house, front of house data, how we'll use AI for data, for communication, for business development, for sales. You know, it's, it's such a new frontier. So I think we should talk about this in a couple of, a couple of months. And there might be pioneers on the call who are already embracing technology and, uh, and, and AI in ways that I would love to learn from. Okay, you know, uh, Ralph, you-, so, you did... Hold on one second. Okay, Fred. Liz, Liz, is that something that's frightening to your staff or something that they are embracing? And probably a little bit of fear, but I think, uh, I think a lot of embracing, there are a lot of, young folks who i mean they're in a you know they live on these stupid things but uh yeah. um and it's just you know that's where we talk about this generational thing so it'll be interesting yep it it, it is it's the uh, i guess the, you know, the new frontier and uh we we will keep we will check back on this ralph you're dealing with outsourced people how do you keep them involved and how do you say hey this isn't working. Well, uh, definitely, um, Larry, uh, you know, we have to maintain uh, commun great communication with, with, with all our vendors. Um, you know, I like to, uh, to meet with uh, the vendors uh, at least once a month uh, to go over uh, any issues or, or, or problems. Uh, it's, it's, it communication is, is, is crucial. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I travel, I, um, I visit uh, not only, uh, you know, my, my, my growers, uh, but I also uh, work with, um, you know, and, and keep, keep communication open with, uh, you know, with these vendors and um, uh, give them a forecast on, on, on how the business uh, can continue to grow 
and uh, and the growth is 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 large in part um you know you can you know they're contributing to to that growth by 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 their great service and and by giving them uh projections on on you know where we are now and and where we're going uh is 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 a great it's a great motivator to um you know to keep keep them uh focused and um and you know and and, and be able to to be ready for you know for uh for the increase in 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 business because that way they they know uh, you know, if they should put on uh, new employees uh, and, um, and and be able to, uh, you know, to handle the uh, the upcoming business. Okay. Okay. So I hear communication. I, um, I hear communication and education and uh, letting people know, you know, reviews. Um, how do we write that into our, you know, our fabric of our company, Bob? How do we weave this in so that it becomes it's not like you say putting people under the microscope this is just something that's done um can you repeat that <laughs> bob how do we make now we're back to being managers again yeah how do you make you know you we talk about the 90-day reviews we talk about uh communication to people how do we make this a non-threatening act that it's just part of improvement of, of an employee, improvement in, of an organization, that well, it's not like a marking period, as you called it, because but, nobody wanted to see their report. But, but Larry, Larry, yeah. you got to understand. And if you ask Liz this and you, and you ask Yvonne this, you can't do that anymore. It doesn't exist. Well, and how do you keep it? Start, okay. it so with, expand on that, Fred. How do you okay. keep so control of things with, without you reviews? Have bring, you have to bring legal counsel in. You have to understand your city, state, and federal laws. You have to have an employee handbook that outlines each of the pieces and stipulation of terms of employment based on that law, et cetera. And then you could start to talk about building a a review process, but that's only a very small part of what you have to do to, pardon the expression, cover your ass going in the door. And so I just want to say you're still going to get sued, <laughs> right? But but that's why you have insurance. I'm not talking um, about suing. I'm talking about yeah. managing your people. I'm talking about building your team. But but unfortunately, no. they're they're one and the same today. They're, yeah. they're not. I, I, I hear what you're saying, Fred. I'm not sure I completely agree. Okay. Um, I think there's there's a uh, a slightly more casual way to approach this, and and let's suppose that uh, you as a business owner had an onboarding process, and in that onboarding process, you were able to lay out a person's um, ideal development. Like after two weeks, you will know these particular skills or these things. Um, you will be expected to do these contributions and, and this will be your own. After th a month, this is what it will look like. After three months, after six months and so forth. These are the objectives that you need to accomplish. These are This is how you will be rewarded and so forth. Um, different for every position, obviously, and different for every company. But if there was that onboarding uh, a career path or track, call it whatever you want, then it becomes uh, and done in the in the sense that it's not a promise, but this these are the KPIs you're expected to hit. These will be your rewards for in sales. These would be your rewards for that, and so forth. So you can see a progression. Uh, if somebody stops during that progression, um, they may plateau, and that might be cool. That might be okay to be in that place. They may plateau or not achieve them, and then you got to question whether they should be there or not. Um, I've seen that done in a, in a real uh, casual way, and I've seen it done by professional HR organizations that have every T e cross and every dot and every I dotted. I think that's the, the, the part you were talking about, um, uh, Fred. But but um, you know, in a, in a small organization, it doesn't have to happen that way. In a small organization, it's a friendly um, career development. This is where you could be. This is where you should be. Kind of a conversation. I think, you know, in a Do conversation, you know, I, go ahead, Liz. No, I, I, I think for, for all of us, big, small, giant, tiny, 80, 90% of our colleagues, our work colleagues, no problem. We set goals, we do 
you know, we don't call them reviews anymore. I think there's like a more positive way to look at it. So, you know, thinking about being in 2023, not in 2013, um, and educating, investing, trusting, respecting. But what 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 Fred is talking about and what I absolutely see is a culture of disruption and real complexity that that is unpleasant for for everyone that is costly that is part of a an evolving very uh lenient from a government labor perspective i mean if the new york city council um passes one more law and i don't know who on the call is in new york city business but you know they're they're they're, they're choking employers you all know about the lean bill that fortunately died in the state assembly, but any employee could put a lien on your personal property if they felt you stole wages. I mean, there's just some crazy extreme stuff going on on both sides politically, and it does hit our businesses. For that 1%, half a percent, 2% of, of, of trouble that we feel as employers, we have to do everything Bob is talking about in terms of setting up a structure to, to, to be super clear. And then we need good HR professionals and business people helping us achieve that because nothing easier than missing a deadline for a 30, 60, 90 day review because you know you gotta go run and solve a problem in a restaurant, a party, whatever. So it's, um, it's a tough landscape and it, and it will shift because everything always does shift, but, but we have to recognize the moment that we're in. Okay, let's let's go back to the original title of our of, of this this event here that we're doing, uh, team building. Uh, we're we're going to let's move from team CYA to team build. Um, you know the positive attitude of the manager. Um, the attitude of the manager is infectious in the group. If you've done your job and you've hired the right people, how do you motivate them? To do the keep to keep doing the job that you want them to, Yvonne. I know, I know you are a big one in taking uh, starting people wherever they start and building them into something else. Um, yeah, I think it's just because that's the way I started, you know. And it, it, in my opinion, it really comes down to attitude. If you have somebody that's, and you know, that I'll, I'll sing praises to this day and forever for the, the, the immigrant attitude. You know, you come here to work, to make money, to hopefully um, you're ambitious, you're, you're, you seem to have good, and I, I hate to say like maybe America kind of makes people a little too, I don't want to say self-gratuitous, but you know, it's, it's about me. We're in hospitality, it's the opposite. It's not about me. Um, but like, like you were saying before, team building is, I think, the most important thing. And it's very difficult. And it's very difficult because most people don't want to be there. They just don't. And they don't want to do, you know, there's, a, there's the funny thing about like being a, a, a school math teacher. They're, they say well, you have to teach the kids something that they don't want to learn, that they don't want to do but you have to teach them and keep them happy and motivated. Like God bless teachers for, for having the ability or the, or the persistence or the spirit, because obviously like we're all human and we get bogged down and some, you have your own problems. And it, it happens to me often where I'm worried about you know, the timing of a party or, you know, the, the, the ceiling tile just fell down, you know, the, the bills are piling up or whatever happens. And I get caught up in my brain saying, you know, I, my attitude is not as positive or enthusiastic as it needs to be, where it really stops with that manager. Like the manager, regardless of what happens, you have to wake up and you have to say, I am going to rally this. It's literally like you're, you're, you know, it's game time. Nothing else matters at this point while still being kind to people because they might be going through something. And I think that's the most difficult part. You know, we all have problems. You had a fight with your wife, your kids at home, you know, they, the, somebody has a toothache. My, somebody's literally, and this happens to us, like somebody's literally crossing the border with their child right now. 
So they're not focused on what they need to do because obviously there's this much bigger things and you need to somehow psychologically pull people in to make sure that the job gets done. Because in our case, it's a wedding, you know, it's like a big wedding. This is the most important day of their lives. So you have to be able to dig deep into their psyche to figure out what is going to get them to follow you for the next hour and a half, two hours, three hours. So you can get to like that, that goal post and score. It's, it's difficult, you know, but it, it comes down to the manager. The manager has to be able to like rally people and pull them together, regardless of what, and get to the to a successful event or a successful service. Yes. Well, thank you, Yvonne. Well, you know, I have a question regarding that. Okay. A last question because it's about that time. Okay. Well, this might be a thought provoking question that you can all take home and get back to me in a, in a uh, separate position paper. Would that be okay? That's fine. <laughs> Hand out homework to everybody. There's a, uh, there's a real dichotomy that happens in every business, regardless of what uh, the industry or segment is. And that's a we versus them uh, mentality. And, um, uh, and uh, a good manager or a good team leader's job is to mitigate that that we versus them and let's let's face it it's in every part of our lives um it's a, it's we you know it, it comes from uh, we as a family unit versus the outside we as a neighborhood versus the outside we as a country versus other countries um your employees have it you know we as the employees versus yvonne as the business owner um and and all of us business owners if you listen to what we're saying uh, a, a lot of it is we as business owners versus our employees. So how do you break that down is, 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 the, uh, is the real challenge. And if I'm the reason I'm, I'm picking on you on this is what you described is just a perfect we and versus is probably the wrong word, but we as their as the catering business have to provide them with with uh, a, a great the greatest day of their lives. Right. So everything is we, them. And I think the biggest challenge is how do we make the we on a daily basis, not employee versus owner, but we, we as a business servicing the public. That's, that's the challenge. And Larry, I just okay. want to add uh, one word that also so critical is communication. When people are unsure and there's uncertainty, that's where a lot of negative stuff creeps in you know we always say we communicate with our spouses we know all about that kind of stuff i spend more time with people i work with than i do with my husband yeah. and i should spend that time so that breaks down the we versus us you know it's 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 one family and that's that's i think the key to anybody who's successful they look at the all of us as a family and communicate like crazy okay yeah hey, if hey, I, Larry, Larry, I, I, if Larry, I, I like to also um, yeah. um, say that uh, empathy is, is is very important because uh, when you em empathize with 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 other people, you can understand uh, you know what they might be going through. Obviously, you know, in a large organization, you, you can't know everyone's uh, what everyone uh, you know is is going through at that time. But at the same time, if you empathize with them, they can empathize with you. And and as a manager. You have to focus on on the job and completing the job, and um, and and so that way uh, you can see each other on the same you know uh, you know eye to eye, even though there might be a hierarchy. Uh, but if you 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 can relate to that person and say, "Hey, I'm here to do a job. They're they're here right. to do a job. Let's get the job done, and then we can go on and you know to so our families. And to, you know, so so you that, do a good that's, job. that's important. You think you did a good job. Okay. okay, listen, it's that time, it's that time of the program where we go around the room and give that one point that you'd like to leave with people uh, so that they understand uh, where you feel, how do you feel, and, and, and give them that one thing to think about when they leave. Bob, why don't you start? Help people value them, help people with their self-esteem, help them value themselves by seeking their opinion. Okay. Liz. I think being really clear on what your mission and vision is, and we did a lot of work, and I want to share our real our redefined mission statement with you all, which is unleash joy through genuine hospitality. And if we can all build around a shared mission and vision, I think it makes everybody's life a lot more wonderful. 
Okay. Ralph. Well, I, I didn't mention empathy, but uh, you know what? Um, focus. Focus on, on, on job one. Okay. Okay. Fred. And that could be many things for many people. It can be, you know, life. It could be family. Uh, it could be uh, your mission, you know, uh, and, um, you know, just keep moving it forward. Okay. Fred. Make people feel good about themselves and cover your ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yvonne, unmute and say hi. Say goodbye. Uh, I'd probably say get involved, just like ownership, you know, in the, in, in the sense of ownership of a problem, ownership of an employee, ownership of, like, if if you don't get involved and address it and, like, look somebody in the eyes and, like, deal with it, it's just going to persist and it's going to grow. And that's when you get, like, the rotting apple, you know, just boiling everything else. All right. Well, you know, in, in my mind, the ultimate leader was Harry Truman. Um, not because of what he accomplished and what he had to, to do and, and the weight that was on his shoulders, but what was on his desk. If you walked into Harry Truman's office, on his desk was a sign that said, the buck stops here. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes as managers, anytime something goes wrong, we point the finger. We point, that guy did this, this person did this. You did this, you did this. It's, I failed at my job. As soon as we start dealing with things like that, that the health of your organization, mental, physical, you know, operational, healthy your organization rests on your shoulders. And if you don't diagnose, communicate and solve problems, there's always going to be another problem. So on that note, I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, in two weeks, we'll be back again with another sore subject called tipping the gorilla in the dining room. Um, that should be an interesting one. So we'll see you in two weeks. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you have any questions, you all have my email. Uh, you all know how to get in touch with me. Please ask questions. And if you'd like to be involved in the virtual breakfast session, if you have an idea, I'm open to everything. So once again, thank you. And I only have two more things to say. Stay positive, test negative, and I'll see you in two weeks. Amen. Happy 4th, everybody. Bye now. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.